Gimbals are incredible filmmaking tools, and I think there's been a lot of videos that have been put out of different gimbal moves that you can do, which is something I wanna to touch on. But I also wanna to touch on the why and the when to use specific gimbal moves. You always wanna make sure there's a reason for everything you're doing, whether your camera's on a tripod or you're shooting handheld or you're using a gimbal to move the camera around. Every move you make or don't make is telling a story. It's telling the audience something. So with each gimbal move that we're gonna be talking about today, there's gonna be a reason and a purpose and a time for when to use those moves. My hope is that myself, just like you watching, continue to become better filmmakers. And so we always wanna think of why we're doing things the way that we're doing and what this action or the non-action is telling the audience as they watch whatever video that we're creating. We don't wanna just haphazardly shoot stuff and just make it look cool. The story is really what's going to connect your audience to whatever video you're making. And so when it comes to gimbals, let's run through these five gimbal moves that you can use when you're filming and when and why you should use each and every one of them. The first gimbal move that I wanna talk about is the reveal. And that can either be kind of a top down reveal or a bottom up reveal. If you're doing the top down reveal, you're gonna start with your camera facing up and as you are walking towards your subject or your character, you're gonna to wanna to slowly bring that camera down to reveal them. Same thing with the, the down up reveal. You're gonna to wanna to start with your camera facing the ground and then tilting up towards your subject to reveal them as you're walking or moving towards your subject or character. The why is to set up the story, the location or the character. This gimbal move reveals what's happening or about to happen in the story. And the when is usually at the beginning of the video or a new location when there's a pause or a break in the story. This is a perfect spot to set someone or something up to push that story forward. The next gimbal move is the tracking shot. Whether that's tracking from the side or tracking from behind or tracking in front, you can do it uh, in a number of different ways, whether that's walking or you're on a one wheel or you're in a vehicle, uh, it's kind of up to you and what your story calls for and where your character or your subject is situated. Maybe that's holding your gimbal low to the ground as you're tracking from the side or tracking behind them, you know, keeping focus on, their, on the subject's feet. As long as you're moving kind of in the same direction as your subject or your character, keeping focus on what is important or what's moving your story forward. That's what's key for this gimbal move. You wanna use this to show movement and progression in the story. And so when is when the story is moving forward and progressing. It's moments of walking or running or driving. Using this gimbal shot gives you a chance or gives the audience a chance to really connect with your character or your subject. It's also a perfect time to kind of drive that story forward Again, giving you that chance to connect with the character, but also pushing you to the next scene or connecting scenes together. The next gimbal move is the push in. The push in, again, can be, can be done in a couple different ways. Uh, usually it's just walking up towards your subject with the gimbal in hand and pushing in on what is important. The why is to stress the importance of the subject in your story or similar to the tracking shot to progress to the next shot most likely a tighter shot. And using the opposite gimbal move, the pull back. Keeping hold of the gimbal and moving away or moving opposite of your character, your subject, and, and moving backwards. Just a very simple move, but one that can be really effective when done right. The why is to reveal a moment, or to reveal your subject, or just to reveal more of the environment. And when it does come to your, your subject, or your character, having them come into frame while you're pulling back kinda adds a little bit of extra sauce, so to speak, to make that shot even more dynamic. The best place to use this kind of gimbal move is at the very end of a scene, or again, to progress into another scene. And lastly, the, the fifth gimbal move to use is called the orbit. One of my favorite to use. So the, the orbit shot is done by orbiting or circling around your subject or your character. Obviously, you can circle around a stationary object or person, 
Um, but if you want to make it a little more dynamic when that person looks or is turning the opposite way, it can just add, add a little extra to this shot. You don't always have to do a full circle or full orbit around your subject or your character, um, but just that motion of circling around them will produce the effect that this, this move goes for. Why you would use this is to create kind of this heroic moment of your character, or to also show the environment that your character or your subject is in. The when is kind of at a, a peak pivotal moment or a climax of a video or discovering this new location. So, like I said, super short, super sweet. Let me know your thoughts. Are these gimbal moves that you've used before? Are there any others that I, I missed that you use? Let me know in the comments below. Again, I wanna make this channel a channel for all freelance creatives, whether new or veterans. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, if there's anything that you want me to touch on or videos that I haven't yet created that you'd like me to create. I'd love to hear from you. As always, I'll see you on the next video. Brrr.